Hello everyone. Human sexuality has both a unitive and procreative dimension. The procreation of new human life is the result of sexual union. This is how nearly all children come into existence. The sexual union of a man and a woman is ordained in itself to the procreating of new life. And that's written in St. John Paul II's encyclical in Humanae Vitae, or sorry, on human life. The love that is implied by sexual intercourse is exclusive, committed and open to the possibility of new life. This does not mean that the desire for a child is the only acceptable motive for expressing sexual union. Sexual union within marriage can be a moment of celebration, of support, of reconciliation or of a whole range of expressions of married love. Nevertheless, the procreative aspect of sexual union remains an essential part of the human meaning of sexuality, to be respected as such even when the couple is not seeking to have a child. Responsible parenthood will often involve planning when to have children. God willing, but this should be not by means of contraception that places a barrier between the partners or that suppresses the healthy working of the body to make the act infertile. These actions undermine the full meaning of human sexuality. They also raise other medical and moral questions that should not be overlooked. The long-term health implications they may have for women and the serious impact they seem to be having on the environment. In addition to this, some chemical contraceptives do not operate only by preventing conception, but they also work by preventing those embryos that are occasionally conceived from implanting. The need for effective family planning requires a different and more radical approach. What is required is reliable knowledge of the cycle of the female fertility and a willingness to agree to abstain from sexual union at certain times. Now the last 20 years have seen great improvements in this area and natural family planning is now regarded by respective medical authorities as being highly effective for those who are as instructed by trained teachers who are strongly motivated. There are also some attractive elements in this approach to family planning. These include self-control, greater awareness of bodily function, the involvement of both partners on an equal basis and the absence of health risks or dependence on constant use of pharmaceuticals. The value of this holistic and human approach to family planning deserves to be taken and considered seriously. Here are a few questions for you to think about. Now first, the church says that the unitive and procreative aspects of procreation of the marital act must not be separated without threatening the integrity and inner truth of conjugal love. What do you think about this and why? Now second, the Planned Parenthood arm of the United Nations is pushing an agenda for fertility control onto the developing world which is in opposition with the Holy See which has observers at the United Nations meetings. Is the church right or wrong to take a stand? What would you say about that? Third. Do you think that the basis of natural family, the basis of the natural family should? Do you think that the basics of natural family planning should be taught in the upper classes of Catholic secondary schools, instead of treating conception as a disease against which they need to protect themselves by all means, by artificial means as well? Controversial questions in this day and age, aren't they? Or how would you answer them? Now, thank you for listening and God bless you all. Oh.